Welcome to Life First Canada. For those of you who are new, I am Karen. Let's just take a moment and close our eyes and take in a big deep breath of that life force energy. And as we do, let's send out love on the exhale to all of those who are suffering right now. Let's just send love and healing thoughts to all those across this beautiful country of ours, across the earth plane, to all those who are feeling lost, alone, afraid. And yes, let's send love to all those who've been devastated by the flooding in BC and all those who are, who've been evacuated Uh, BC is going through a really rough time. Uh, I think there was 7,000 people in Merritt that were evacuated. And yeah, <laughs> as a few were mentioning here, we know it's they're going to try to create a devastated reality, whether it's through the V, whether it's through fires, whether it's through flooding. And I... I would be recommending anyone who's on a flood plane right now to really consider moving. <clears throat> so through all the curveballs of 2020 and 2021, we are rising to the challenge to constantly evolve, to adapt and respond to the new information. We're constantly receiving new information. And the world is changing rapidly in ways that two years ago, many of us could have never imagined, right? We've been forced to really embrace dramatic changes like never before. And at the same time, I do believe that we're being forced to really experience that interconnectedness of humanity and to really re-examine what it means to be a human being. And as you know, I do not believe in surviving. I believe in thriving. We are living in a time of ascension, the dawning of a new era. We're being asked to, to become the highest version of ourselves in, in amongst the darkness and the chaos. And I believe it is your voice, the voice of your higher self that's gonna guide you and ensure a thriving future no matter what happens. And I know you may be feeling exhausted with all that's happening right now. You're probably desiring change for the good and yet feel as if we've experienced too much change at the same time. And you may be questioning yourself, questioning reality. I'm here to remind you that you're not crazy. I'm here to also make sure that you focus on nurturing yourself, taking time for self-care. So there's self-care, nurturing you, nurturing your family, your business, whatever you're working on. And at the same time, rekindling and igniting that light inside of you that motivates you to assist in creating that next phase of our life in the new earth. So we here at Life Force Canada are here to educate you on how to prepare for change that's coming and how we can create a self-governing system. Now, our last two calls have been really about peaceful non-compliance. So remember, your rights only exist as long as you exercise your responsibility, right? No one can do it for you, right? And we all know this, especially the government. So anyone at any time can try to bully you into giving up or waiving your rights, any right. Your right to work, to live, to move about, and only you can say no. But you know, saying no is not enough, especially in these times right now. 
And after you say no, often they, right, being family or friends or an employer, will just keep rolling over you, not because they should or that they are legally entitled to, but because you don't know what to do against their pressure and their persistence. Or maybe you are too afraid. Only when you say no with confidence and in that peaceful non-compliance will things begin to change for the better, right? This is where you are here to stand your ground, 100%. So our agenda this evening is to inspire you to be a conscious leader and empower you to take action in our plan councils or to create your own town council if you haven't already or to join a think tank. We're gonna be talking about the PGSD tonight. What is a de jure council and how does this help us become sovereign? So Sandra and I are gonna be taking you through the PGSD website briefly. Then we're gonna have a Q and A. Uh, so save your questions uh, till then. And at the end, I'm going to have a, uh, be facilitated in a meditation so that you can experience your extraordinary mind. I'm gonna be asking you questions to contemplate, to see where you're in resistance of letting go and really stepping into the new earth. And we all know here that we do not need a provincial government or a federal government. You are the new government my friends. Now, during times of crisis, we look at our society leaders, right, for guidance, trusting that they're going to help us give us the direction that we're seeking. And you can see so many people are doing just that. As we're experiencing a void in leadership, we are all becoming very aware that we all have a responsibility, the ability to respond to lead, right? To lead, to, to lead ourselves. And this starts with you, right? We are accountable to each other. And the only way out of this crisis is by coming together to do what we can to help each other survive and more importantly, thrive. Now, if we are to lift ourselves out of this present state of disconnection and into a more healthy and thriving future, we must step up and embrace conscious leadership. So what is conscious leadership? Conscious leadership means having the willingness to step out of your comfort zone to do the right thing, right? It means having the courage to sacrifice all that you know to be true for the sake of knowing a higher truth. Conscious leadership is about each of us remembering how to be better human beings. It's time for a new era in how we do business and how we behave in our own life. And it's also it also includes being more conscious and authentic in our relationships. So conscious leadership is less about power and more about empowerment. We must know ourselves, our mind, our emotions, and really connect to that vision that we all have within our imagination and to lead with mindful awareness and to know that everything is connected, right? And this is about us all stepping into a higher level of integrity because we can see in this world right now, there's a huge lack of integrity, right? It is up to us to bring the integrity. So as we create the new earth together, we're being called to increase our ability to examine and re-examine our thought processes, to see what we think is true, to see if what we believe is true, and if not, having that willingness to self-reflect. And I know you've all been down the rabbit holes, many, many rabbit holes, 
where we're here to really admit our fears and our doubts and, and then figure out how we can begin to see our lives and the lives of others from a higher perspective. So conscious leadership comes down to putting people first before profit. And everything we do as humans must no longer be driven by the need for money. To breathe that one in. So the need, the need, right, that desperate need for money created the old town council model of manipulation, deceit, distrust, control. And we can see that hunger for power everywhere. The town council members have that we have here with mayors in all the towns throughout Canada and other countries, we can see that they have been bought off, right? To play the genocide agenda game that we're experiencing. This is no longer acceptable. And it's time for us to create new sovereign councils in every town what we call the de jure council. It's based in natural law. And every plan council is being presented with an opportunity to think creatively, to act from a place of wisdom and facilitate that shift in consciousness, which is gonna be of really great importance. So as we create our plan councils in every town and province, another important trait is gonna be having empathy. And empathy involves holding space and giving a voice to others. So when we combine empathy with a mindset of that continuous learning, and I see everyone in our plan councils today have such an incredible learning attitude. We are, we are prioritizing the we over the me. And it shows vulnerability and humility through our decisions and the actions that we're making. But I know that's not enough even, right? Council members who seek stability and choose to try to truly make a difference in their communities in the future is gonna need to have the qualities of kindness, consideration, trust, good listening skills. It's not about putting people down or criticizing them for what they've done wrong. Everyone needs to feel valued and to know that they are worthy of a prosperous life. And I know you all agree with this. We need to develop the ability to work collaboratively together and develop the skills to tackle challenges without the need for outside consultation. The world we are co-creating requires leaders to step up their game, to be more inclusive, more balanced in their way of being, more responsive instead of reactive. So con conscious leadership is sovereignty and sovereignty is mastery of self. Because in order to effectively lead with impact, it requires taking full ownership of who you are. And I challenge you to heal your wounds, then follow your heart and share your wisdom because every one of you has incredible magnificence inside of you. And we need you. We need you to show up in these trying times as the conscious leader that you are. And you are the leader that we've been waiting for. So right now I am drawn to share a video with you. This video has been going viral. You've probably already seen it. I received so many emails and messages, not about the video per se, but in regards to the overall message that this man is sharing. It's only, it's a brief video, but I wanted to share it because I think it's important for us to have a little bit of a discussion <laughs> about it on the other side. Um, because I know so many of us right now are feeling, what can I do? Things are happening. 
we need to do something right now. And so I just wanted to uh, share this video with you. Welcome to From Rome Info Video. My name is Brother Alexis Spinola, and I'm the uh, editor and publisher of FromRome.info, an electronic journal for news and commentary about Rome, Italy, the Catholic Church, and the Vatican. The project of the Great Reset has gone forward for now <laughs> nearly two years with no effective opposition because um, the opposition isn't doing anything to oppose it. If we uh, take a step back and look how we are reacting to it, those of us who recognize it for what it is and see how evil it is, we're spending our days uh, lamenting, watching videos, reading articles, learning, um, maybe we go to some protests and tell the government that we don't like what they're doing, please stop. We probably still sometimes wear the mask, but we're not doing anything to stop it. Now, when there is a criminal conspiracy uh, active, ongoing, that's killing hundreds of thousands of people, you don't go, please stop. <laughs> it's not going to stop it. And this is why it's going ahead and people say, there's several groups. We'll never win. They're too great. <laughs> we'll, we'll totally win. We are right. But none of these groups are doing anything to stop it. You're not going to stop this uh, by writing letters to your politicians. They're all bought. You're not going to start this by going to a town hall meeting and telling them to stop. Maybe in some small towns that might work, but in the big cities, not. They're all bought. Uh, it's not going to happen by legislation. Do you think the globalists haven't bought all the legislatures of the world and all the politicians? They wouldn't have been pulling this off if they hadn't. Journalists aren't going to listen to you. They're all bought. Judges certainly aren't going to listen to you. They're all bought. If not at the lower levels, at the highest levels. The globalists would have never launched this unless they already controlled all these things. We are being given a lot of false hope by these little occasions in which uh, someone intervenes and stops something for a time or this certain uh, death vax is removed and not others. So it's uh, absolutely essential that we organize a true opposition. And I don't mean a political movement. I don't mean any kind of movement. I mean, we oppose. The criminal conspiracy and how do you stop a criminal conspiracy that's ongoing there's only one way you arrest the criminals okay i said this in november of 2020 and people thought it was great i said it and i got a lot of clocks from it no one did anything and still no one's doing anything so stop with uh yeah, i have to found a new political movement a new political party we have to organize the opposition we need a protest to do this and that that's all useless. There's only one way to stop this, and it's to arrest the criminals. And you, you're not going to, it's not going to happen by everyone deciding nationwide to arrest the criminals. You got to start arresting them locally. And then you have to spread the arrests, and you have to keep going until you arrest them all. And if everyone's bought, you got to arrest them all. You either have to arrest them for being actively complicit in the genocide of the citizens of your nation. Or you have to arrest them on the suspicion of being actively complicit or passively or intermediary somehow or collaborating with a conspiracy to genocide the nation. That's the accusation. This is an accusation made on natural law. If you don't have any laws in your national constitution, your state constitutions, your provincial constitutions, your county or town constitution to authorize citizens arrest, you don't need it. It's by natural law which is the right of self-defense. And the government exists to defend the honest people, not to exterminate the citizenry. As soon as they start acting to exterminate the citizenry or gravely injure, kill, maim, uh, or sterilize vast parts of the population, natural law prevails. All human laws take a step back and the natural right of defense gives every citizen to the right to arrest these people. You would have the right 
even to kill them, but you don't need to go that far. Arrest is sufficient. You arrest them all and you charge them all. You don't have to hang them, try them or anything. You arrest them all and try them all. Once they're all arrested and your government's all in prison, then you hold new elections and let the new government decide what to do with them. This is the democratic, uh, peaceful way of doing it. So since that's the only solution, you're wasting all your time, now that you know what the problem is, doing anything else, even going to work, okay? And now, of course, some people need to work to support themselves, but you're all going to be dead unless you arrest these people. Your children are going to be dead, your parents are going to be dead, and you're going to be dead. So why sit around waiting wait and think, I need a plan to flee, I need, a, I, need a, uh, uh, I need enough guns to defend myself at the house. Why are you waiting for the threat to come to you? You need to take justice to them. You need to hunt the hunters, okay? And so all you need to do is get the people who have been red-pilled in our wake in your town, organize a meeting, get together, and lay out a plan for arresting the mayor, the chief of police, all the police, the judges, uh, everyone in town who's doing the vaccine, the doctors, arrest them all and put them in the, the town or county jail. And then when you're done liberating your town, hold an election and elect new leaders that are against it. Raise a militia and go arrest the people in the adjacent towns and spread the liberty. This is the simple, easy, and only solution. And it's not going to stop any other way because all, the globalists can't buy everyone in town. And everyone right now wants to be liberated from this thing. So the people are going to back you. And uh, the media can't follow what's going on in every town. So um, this is the only, this is the weak underbelly of the great, great Reset. And if you don't start doing it, you'll be dead. So wake up and start really opposing the Great Reset and organize and execute the arrest of everyone involved in your town. That's the way to go about it. That's the only way to go about it. Take a deep breath. <laughs> so in order for us to have the confidence to arrest these criminals, we need to do this together we need to learn natural law. We need to know our rights. And this is one of the reasons I've been sharing in the last three weeks or so about the David Strait videos and how we need to overcome our fear of authority. So once you do, then you rise up in owning your own authority. And we do this by creating our sovereign councils, our planned councils. So I'm trusting that every time we meet here, you're getting ignited to start your town council, your town plan council. Yes, exactly, Janine. Holy cow. <laughs> yes, we are doing everything, right? And I do believe that as we move forward, we need to become conscious leaders. We need to begin to take action, but we can only do this together. Together we rise, correct? Okay, so now I'm gonna be sharing with you the PGSD website for those who are very interested in starting their town council, okay? And seeing how we create the structure that shows you how to hold that power. And every human being holds the power to create the world that we want to see. And so what is the PGSD? For those who do not know, it's the People's Government Service Department. And even though it's based in the United States, every country is sovereign and they're just teaching every human being how to create an assembly in their town, city, state, province, so they can take back control from this de facto government. So we do not call them assemblies here in Canada. We refer to them as plan councils, as you've heard us and many of us say over the past year. Kelly is the director of the PGSD and has asked me to be the PGSD liaison for Canada. So I'm here to really address issues, needs, and questions for each plan council uh, across Canada and really help seek immediate solutions in order to keep everyone moving forward so that we can be ratified and eventually uh, receive funding. 
uh, funding for projects that the town's people um, see as a need, right? So I'm here to really um, assist in the needs assessment piece. I'm just going to grab the website here. I already posted the link, Karen. Oh, you're awesome. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Okay, so I'm just gonna share my screen. Okay, so anyone can view this site and a founding component of the PGSD charter is for us to provide direction, assistance, guidance, and coordination to both established and startup assemblies or councils in Canada around the world in order that we may recover our ability to successfully self-govern. And I'm not gonna go through the whole site. I'm just gonna give you an idea of what it's about. So the deep state have been selling us on their idea of globalism for decades. The vision of interim head of state, Kimberly Ann Gogan is an, is an alliance of self-governed nations working together for a free and borderless cooperation of peoples. We couldn't agree more, hundreds of nations, one people. And find your assembly. You can find the, the provincial councils are here. Uh, not every province, but the majority are, 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 are here, has submitted for ratification. So while you're automatically a member of the greater assembly for your nation, state, province, or city, your local assembly is where the work gets done. So that's your town council. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done. So uh, if there is no assembly in your area, then consider organizing an assembly. And how you can do that, uh, you can connect to a plan council, the provincial plan council in your province. And so you'll see the links in your chat for the BC, there's for Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, and then the Atlantic provinces. And these are some featured assemblies uh, that have been ratified in the US. There's more than this, of course, but it, uh, this, is, this is just the beginning. So establishing authority, to exercise authority, you must first establish authority. So this is establishing authority in your town. Once you're ratified, your town council is ratified, your law, your natural laws supersede all government laws. Most people are not aware of this. And that's why we can arrest the mayor, et cetera. So we establish our sovereign authority as assemblies on the foundation of the interim head of state sovereign authority. There is a declaration of independence for the living beings of earth. I recommend that you read that on your own time. Uh, we're not gonna go through that tonight. It is a long document. And it shows here all the different uh, oversight and operations for how you proceed. Sandra in a moment is gonna read out the resolution of one accord, but before she does that, I'm going to share with you. Kelly created this incredible article, Building for Self-Governance. And I just want to read it uh, to you. You can actually read it here on the site as well. It just helps you to gain a deeper understanding of what it is to create your own town council. So point number one in the restoration plan is the return to self-governance. This also appears to be a serious point of confusion at many points around this planet. There seems to be a lot of misunderstanding about how an assembly fits into self-governance. There also appears to be a fundamental lack of understanding about what an assembly is. So let's start there. An assembly is a service organization for the greater assembly. Okay, let's look at that. What is the greater assembly? The greater assembly is the nation or province or county or city that your assembly is established in. Everyone who lives there is a member of the greater assembly. They are the people that all the members of your de jure assembly serve. 
They identify the needs and problems, right, within your town, within your county, your region, your province, that are caught that caught in the causes of these problems and the available solutions to the these needs and problems. Where appropriate, meaning where it returns a right that has been taken from the people, and we can see many of those rights are have been taken, right? The assembly that your town council can write orders that return those rights. When it comes to changing a law or a perceived right of the people, the assembly is going to first educate, then ask for the vote of the greater assembly. If they vote in favor, the assembly will write the orders that implement this decision. So assemblies don't legislate, they facilitate. So we're letting go of the hierarchical structure. Ratified assemblies are sovereign lawful governance entities. That's right, from the city or town level, assembly all the way up to the global assembly, each assembly is a sovereign lawful governance entity. It sounds simple, but there's a little, little bit of, to parse there. First ratified assembly. This means an assembly has filed their lawful and operational parts of the ratification package. And this is what we help you to do in your town. They have implemented a structure that honors the intent of the restoration plan. And that includes the nine pillars, education, health and wellness, right? We're, we're, we're just recreating all those pillars to serve the people. The systems for internal operations are all functional and stable. They have defined the areas of responsibility and their responsibility for those areas for all of their committees. This is what I'm talking about in regards to conscious leadership. So they had begun their needs assessment. They had begun investigating the theft of rights from the people. So this is where we need a lot of people who love to do research or love to create documents. Uh, they have built cases for the restoration of these rights. They are putting orders together to carry out the restoration of the rights that have been identified. They have enough active members in the de jure assembly to be ready to move into the next stage of their assembly, which is taking on the tasks of lawful governance. A sovereign assembly means that the assembly has the authority and responsibility to act on behalf of the people in their area of responsibility. The smaller the area of governance, such as a town or city, etc. The authority sits with the city town assembly. So all authority goes not to a provincial level, not to a federal level. It's the town, it's the city where the power is. The assembly is responsible for cooperating with and being accountable to the assemblies both above it and below it in terms of responsibility. They have the autonomy to prioritize the needs for their area of responsibility. National assemblies don't prioritize for city assemblies except on matters of national importance. So with those points understood, it should be, be, it should be becoming much clearer on how important that assemblies all the way down to the city town level are. There is a mistaken impression that you need to speak for the people that might have communication issues or lack of education or lack of specific skill sets. This is not only wrong, it is, it is exactly the opposite of the restoration plan intention of restoring self-governance. Remember that as an assembly, your job is to facilitate the voices of your people being heard, not speaking or deciding for them. So finally, I want to really emphasize the importance of making sure that the structure of your national and state provincial assemblies is one that avoids control structures over the smaller areas of responsibility. And that being that there's no hierarchy. If you are building structures that consolidate power to the top, count on being challenged on it. So everyone is accountable. Don't count on being ratifiable and recognize that a failure to keep the principles of the restoration plan in mind will result, just as it has in numerous nations with the requirements of your state 
province, or in the case of states, the county district assemblies to be ratified first, and then coming together to charter the state or national assembly. So here in Canada, we're being asked that every province is ratified and then we create a national assembly. We are implementing the biggest change the world has yet to see. Don't let fundamental misunderstandings derail your part in it. Sandra, are you there? I am. Yay. Do you want me to just share my screen with the resolution or you can share your Yes. No, nope, that's fine. You go ahead and share. I can read it from there. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Sandra. Great to see 120 people in the room tonight. And uh, once again, across Canada. So welcome everyone near and far. So the resolution of one accord is what is referred to as the, in, in the lawful components, it's a document that gets signed when you charter by the, by the council members when they charter the um, beginning of your de jure assembly. It is referred to as the social compact. The compact being the, I guess, the agreement of how we are to one another, the respect that we have. And in, in a way, it, this encapsulates perhaps some of what we're basing everything on in natural law. The declaration of, of uh, living beings probably goes a lot further. It's a huge uh, document and it's still being in the final being drafted. But, and, and I, my understanding is there's a new um, resolution of one accord. So I don't know what updates they've made to it, but this one's dated September 8th. So, but there will be another one um, for you soon. So I'll just read it and uh, we'll get an idea of what the re resolution of one accord, an agreement created by the people with the People's Government Services Department. Purpose. The purpose of this document is to create a starting point and a framework for the new reality on Earth, life without the deep state. Over time, this document may need to be updated, but for today, this basic framework will allow all of humanity to begin to explore liberty within the context of natural law. Regarding life and nature, one, all life is sacred and humanity is responsible for the well being of all life on the planet. Natural law applies to all inhabitants of this planet and beyond. This principle is innate within every sentient being. Therefore, all life must be engaged with love, considering the role each of us plays in the overall ecosystem of our planet. Two, Humanity is free and independent from the time of their birth. All rights associated with this freedom are the people's to define. The posterity of the family is the responsibility of the parents who should provide for, educate, and support the natural healthy development of each child until the child is able to do so for himself or herself. The parent has the right to do this in any way they see fit so long as they are not abusive or in violation of the natural laws that govern each community. Three, no one shall be held in slavery. Slavery and the slave trade in all their forms shall be prohibited. No one shall be held in servitude. Four, no child or adult shall be sexually exploited in any way, including all forms of pedophilia. Five, all malicious acts against humanity must stop immediately or be punished according to the law of the land. Six, earth, food, water, and air are essential components to life on earth. It is a crime against humanity to alter these core components in any way, pardon me, that negatively affects human vitality. Companies, organizations, government offices, and individuals must conduct regular audits of their operations and cease and desist any action that negatively impacts life on Earth. Seven, the people recognize that there are things that exist that may be invisible, metaphysical, or immeasurable that have tangible value. It is part of the human experience to seek understanding of our origins, powers latent within, and potential. 
Therefore, people are free to communicate, observe, practice, participate, believe, or create any spiritual, energetic, or religious activity, so long as it does not hurt others, incite violence, or violate natural law and the fundamental rights of the people. These rights will be protected without exception. Regarding governance, note, during this transitional period, the People's Government Services Department will assist and support the assemblies in getting established and investigate issues that they cannot resolve. This will remain in force until such time as the people can self-govern. One, assemblies will be recognized in the Hall of Records when the assembly is with sufficient members who live within a recognized geographical space, a nation, state, province, county, township, city, city etc., to effectively operate the assembly. So we have to have sufficient members <laughs> to operate. Uh, sub note one, begin when the, um, they begin to meet openly and regularly and complete the ratification process as published on the People's Government Services website at where we're at. And every member of the assembly needs to sign this document as an indication that they will work within the tenets of this new framework. Number two, the people must have a voice that represents their genuine interests. Elected officials must be part of the community which they represent. Officials agree by the acceptance of their election that they will conduct their public and private business in an ethical manner. Three, assemblies can be formed for smaller or larger geographically recognized areas, depending on population and the needs within a state or country. One, at a minimum, each state, province, district, or country should work to develop an assembly and assemblies that represent smaller territories within. And number two, all forms of assemblies must have regular meetings that are open to the public. Four, state assembly meetings are open to the public. That's a bit of a repeat, but assemblies will have a minimum of nine core activity committees. One, officers, law and law enforcement committee. The heads of these committees will serve as members of the National Safety Committee, along with the two assembly officers from every state. I believe this is, these are some of the areas that are going to be um, amended with the new one, but um, in particular in regards to National Safety Committee, I'm not sure they're still referring to it as that. Exactly. Number two, the Health and Wellness Committee. Three, Environment. Four, Needs Assessment. Five, Treasury six project management, seven family services, eight education and nine security. The assembly must consider the consequences of each action as it applies to individuals, communities and the planet. This consideration must be weighed before any decision, direction or guidance becomes the law of the land. Number seven, public comprehension of accurate information is the cornerstone of a successful government. The elected have an obligation to inform those they represent of the details, purpose, operation, and impact of any law, spending, project, or contribution. There must be a cause of action coupled with informed consent for all government activities. Laws must be written and passed singly without inclusion of other items. Laws must be written com compactly in language understandable to a 10-year-old child. Number eight, laws must be enforced, always considering the spirit of the law over the letter of the law. All actions have natural consequences, whether positive or negative. Nine, peace officers are directed by the assembly. 10, peace officers are responsible for the safety of the people they are charged to protect. 11, peace officers are required to uphold the law of the land and must be held to a high standard to restore the integrity of this role. 12, peace officers are responsible to the people, whether on duty or off duty. 13, peace officers should be respected as the authority representing the laws that keep the people safe. Regarding assembly meetings, number one, assemblies and the global assembly are not lawmaking bodies. Two, global interaction will be used to benefit humanity. Regular meetings will give representatives from any and every assembly the opportunity to pool resources on a global level and bring ideas back to their local assemblies. 
Different people can be chosen as representatives to attend the Global Assembly meetings as decided by the body respective to each territory. Three, Global Assembly General Session, a chance to learn about and discuss items with global impact led by the PGSD, GIA and Global Directorate Office. Global Assembly Core Activity Committee Breakout Sessions, a chance to present obstacles, solutions and best practices in a collaborative effort to learn from each other. Regarding media, the integrity of the news related media must be established and maintained to inform the people. Reporters bear the responsibility of sharing the information they gain access to and are accountable to investigate the validity of their sources. The media should resemble a scientific process. Each story should reflect a pursuit of the evidence behind any theoretical or speculative information. Final conclusions should not be drawn until proof has been gathered. The final report should reflect the thought process, methods of research, and reasons for each conclusion. Three, evidence gathered that contradicts a published story should be given equal press. If facts show that what has been communicated is false or can be effectively argued another way, the opportunity should be given to present the people with that information. I'll get you to scroll up a bit more, Karen, please. Regarding individual responsibility and honor. One, the people are henceforth sovereign entities responsible to self-govern and work peacefully towards common goals that protect the individual, humanity, the planet, and all life on earth. Two, there are key attributes inborn and necessary for humanity to thrive. Certain qualities included but not limited to are trust, truth, honor, integrity, selflessness, love, cooperation, consent, humility, forgiveness, compassion, valor, appreciation, inner standing, stewardship, protection of family, protection of innocence, freedom from offense, and creativity. Three, unique perspectives on purpose, meaning, values, and priorities are natural components of being human. Although these differences have been used in the past to divide us, we will endeavor to honor our differences while identifying common ground that draws us together. Affirmation, this is what you finish off in signing it. I affirm that I am of sound mind and comprehend that by signing the document below, I agree with the content of this document and will perform my duties in line with the contents herein. And so it is. <laughs> and so it is. <laughs> I find that as reading through that, I find it is a bit of a hybrid document of sort of laying out the vision, but then it's kind of like this agreement of certain principles that you uh, agree with. So uh, I think this came in, into being fairly early in the process, and, and I'm hoping that the next uh, version of it kind of cleans some of that up. But the gist is there. Everybody gets the gist. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sandra. And for those who are new here, uh, Sandra is a big part of our Plan Council, Alberta, and she is also one of the main producers of the UNN News Canada. So yeah, does an extraordinary job. Thank you so much, Sandra. Thanks, okay. Karen. You're welcome. Okay, we're going to move into a Q&A. If you have any questions on what uh, we talked about tonight, um, please raise your hand. To, uh, just click on the reactions button. DK. Hey, um, hi, Karen. Thanks for having me. Um, my first reaction upon you know, being presented with this, um, I'm sure we, um, definitely I agree with you. We should, you know, um, recognize our sovereignty and, and and do everything that that encompasses but um it, it, the, like going to um to actually like start arresting people um which i agree should happen i'm just, I'm just not sure that it's, it's us who should be doing it but um but just to me my first reaction is that it seems quite scary and if, if we're um i'm not arguing the validity of, of it but um if if we're going to do this this has to be something that's planned very well. And like, I mean, we, it, it's, it brings up so many uh, questions. Um, but anyway, that's, that's what comes to my mind. 
Thank you, DK. Yes, I, I don't plan on arresting anybody myself. <laughs> I am so not there. I get it. <laughs> yeah, so this is, this is so important to be discussing this because I'm receiving so many emails lately uh, that, you know, we're not doing enough and we need to arrest them. And, and then all of a sudden this video pops up. <laughs> and then after the video pops up, I'm receiving more emails in regards to that we're not doing enough. And I get it. Uh, so many people are just feeling helpless. And what I have to say to that is we are so not prepared to be arresting anybody right now at all. It will happen on the other side. Like once we have created sovereignty uh, in togetherness, uh, then we have a plan. That's why the plan councils have the word plan in it, right? So people, land, air, nature, and we need to create a plan, an effective plan that really works for the people. And I do believe that as we move forward, uh, you know, more people are going to know about natural law, we're gonna have the confidence to step into natural law and to step into knowing that we do not need to have any fear of authority, perceived authority above us. And as we reclaim our confidence, um, I do believe that eventually we'll have the capacity to, to arrest the people that needs to be arrested. You know, uh, there's people that are in different towns in the U.S. and they are going in and firing school boards, right? That's where we can start is those, those places. Um, they're firing school boards and getting them all out and bringing in new people who are sovereign. So I get it, DK. We have a ways to go. We're preparing. <laughs> Thank you. Kim, go ahead. I want to know who we were going to arrest first. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> I think that every town is going to have a really big list. <laughs> Can we not implore the military to do it? Uh, it depends on... on if the military is sovereign, right? So I do believe in time, eventually more and more people are joining the sovereignty movement, more and more people are waking up and it will be the law enforcers, 100% it will. And as we continue on this path, it's really about getting people to say, yes, I wanna create a plan council in my town and to, to be fearless in that and to know that even, even just having the, the ignited fire within you to say, okay, I, I have some skill sets. I know how to create documents. I know how to do this. And we will teach you how to do everything you need to know. Thank you, Tim. Do you have another question? Yes. We could also stand outside their office and tell them when they come in in the morning that the, they have broken our trust and they can go home. We don't have to arrest them, but we can stand in front of their office and not let them go to work. Go home. You've broken our trust. Go home. A hundred percent, Tim. Yes, I do believe that Susan Stanfield was talking about something similar to that uh, last year when I interviewed her and she was talking about how a group of people, I don't know where this was, in Vancouver and everybody wore white and she said they need to stand in front of these people's homes and have a thousand people standing in front of their home, silent in white, and we do not leave until they submit. Right. Okay, I yield. Thank you, Tim. Bettina? Uh, yeah, Karen, you know, those emails I sent you this morning and whatever, I don't quite understand. But Kim sent out a cease and desist order probably to the U.S. group and whatever, because I don't understand that uh, we didn't uh, send out our email list to, to get the cease and desist order in Alberta, because things are just still doing the same shit here as it was two years ago. Like Tam says, no, you can't even have sing Christmas carols. Are you kidding me? You know, I mean, it's just getting 
berserk here. I don't know if, if that email list was sent to Kim and the cease and desist or why it wasn't, or, you know, we, I mean, I agree on that guy that the, the, the video you just said there, this sort of thing doesn't really do anything. It's basically, we got to throw them in jail. You know, we've got to um, have proof against them and do it, but under natural law, not under this uh, rule of the land, of course. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's kind of, and what I was trying to get at with those emails I was sending there, I did, I don't, and the actual document that I don't know whether you sent it or for the cease and desist on the COVID and all that. And uh, just kind of wondering what's going on there. Thank you, Alan. And I do appreciate your emails. I, I really appreciate your passion to exit this corrupt luciferian system i totally get it <laughs> yeah you wouldn't believe it yeah i know i know we're creating the orders every province is being asked to create their orders of cease and desist it does take time to put together there's a lot of research that needs to go into it uh, every province was asked to to collect emails in regards to all the crimes against humanity and that's being done right now with PGSD. And so I'm trusting Canada is next on the list. And so we just need to be patient and trust in the divine timing of everything because it, it is happening. It is really truly happening on the invisible realms. And yeah, we just need to stay patient. Thanks, Alan. Yeah. So uh, uh, Kim didn't request any of those, those emails then be sent out then is that what you're saying i do believe they're sending emails out right now they're sending emails out to everyone right now it just it's a big yeah, like, it's a big uh database that they have to create and it's a lot of work to create it because there's emails for every country <laughs> so it's a lot of work so we just have to be patient okay thank you well, I, my patience is almost there. i know <laughs> i get it and just you just go out and sing those christmas carols this Christmas. <laughs> I'm swinging my shovel to get some work. <laughs> uh, cold calling. Uh, Dolores, did you still have a question? Hi. Um, hi, Karen. Thanks. By the way, I, I got hold of uh, Quebec Council. I'm part of the council now of Quebec. So thanks Yay. to you. Because they're in the middle of a change with their website. So that's why I didn't find it. Anyway. Thanks for that. And I do agree with DK about, cause I'm in, 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 in a French speaking, it's, it's even harder when there's two languages. Do you know when, when you're doing, when you're approaching people, especially when, uh, when it comes to any enforcement in the future, I just thought I'd put that in there cause it's unique. The love, there's a lot of bilingual and a lot of people that just want to speak French. So I don't know the, if how that's going to work into people that prefer French, uh, speaking French in Quebec, uh, as part of their um, natural law. Like, I don't know, I guess that would be part of their right, but then uh, it's notice everything originated uh, uh, from the global restoration in English, right? So it, it's going to be, there's something that we have to do a little extra, I think, of Quebec. So it might be a little harder. But, you know, I'm in on it. I don't mind arresting people, by the way. <laughs> You're <Okay>. awesome. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. I do believe that they are beginning the, the journey of translating everything to in different languages right now. So thank you. And uh, Linda... Erwin, uh, yes, we definitely do not want to be arresting anyone right now because we would probably end up in jail ourselves. <laughs> this is here for all of us to know that we need to start creating our plan councils. We need to start learning natural law. We need to start learning our rights and got on self-governance, that we have the power to do this. We're just not meant to do it alone we're meant to come together and take back our power but there's a structure and a way to do this and that's why sandra and i went through the pgsd website and so it's making sure that we do this lawfully <laughs> kathleen 
Yeah, my question is about the Girl Pledge of Service. I'm uh, not sure. Are we still going with the documents we had several months ago, or is that an evolution down the road? Uh, so that was a part of the assembly in a box, and we're not doing that as far as I know right now. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you. And eventually we will definitely be having the jural in regards to having grand juries that will be down the road. Okay. I have quite a few friends that want to be a jurors. <laughs> <laughs> oh well yeah but we're, we're not ready yet no we're not ready yet Long structure to go to yeah. yeah thank you uh brian <clears throat> in regard to who do you arrest first first you go after the low hanging fruit so i'll mm -hmm. use a little um example so uh somebody gets vaccinated and uh it's basically done by a nurse so you arrest the nurse and then you ask you question the nurse and in her trial it comes out the doctor told her then you question the doctor well the hospital owner told him then you question the hospital owner and then it goes up to the college of physicians and surgeons and then you question you arrest them and you Go and you work your way up and you give plea bargains to people to testify against people that give them the orders and we want to collect everybody and this is not easy. There's going to be terrible time trying to get everybody there's going to be lots that are going to be almost uh, anonymous so. Um, there is another factor to look at too that it may not have a lot of legal standing but based on mega wealth is just about <laughs> contributes to your guilt. If you have major wealth and especially derived from COVID, you are guilty. And then uh, you just try to collect everybody, everybody that you can. And you have to get people at the low hanging branches to testify against the rest of them. And I don't want to miss any of them. <laughs> I want them all to be held accountable. Yes. Is that a yield? Thank you, Brian. Yes. And I do believe, you know, every town, every county needs to begin creating that list 100%. And you're right. Start with the low hanging fruit. Olga, and Olga, I just want to thank you so much. I really appreciate your messages and your kind words. You continually inspire me to continue on. So thank you, Olga. Of importance there. And congratulations again on the choice and the right choice. And I, I'm sure everybody agrees with that statement. Um, what I was going to say at uh, live at five on 11, um, Stefan Rowe is speaking about emails being sent. Now, maybe not exactly our emails, there, there will be process, there will be, um, you know, it'll take a few days maybe to be sent everywhere, but listen live at five. Uh, November 11th, the last part of uh, his news, he explains explicitly how that's being done and what will be the result and why so. Another thing I was going to say, um, if we look back where we started, at least us in Ontario, I'm from the very beginning, and there was a lot of confusion which way we go. And with the time, we got everything we needed from life force, all the guidance, all the instructions. In time, no one put pressure on us that we must do, but rather being praised for every step we did. And I think we did very well in less than a year. And so is every other province. We're doing very, very well. And the best we could do, and we everybody that had learned how to write a cease and desist order how to do the, the, the uh, 
the research to compile the information to have that all ready and when we are ready with writing the order we have the support from from uh, uh, the agency the CIA did I say it right no that's not right CIA <laughs> yes we 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 do have the support from them and we just need to work a little harder. We have a, in, us in Ontario, we have a number of orders in process in writing, but somehow it, we feel it's not enough. We need to do more. No, we have to put a little more, more pressure on it, kind of on ourselves, personal pressure. Like, no, I shouldn't wait another day. I shouldn't wait another week. What I what I have ready, I should give it out. And so so should everybody else. That's the stage we are at and we are doing very very well I think that, that at every province what I hear and when I listen to to Manitoba how confident she speaks about her orders is beautiful and once and, and next step is now that it, we started with this organizing the general quorum who who is going to be how we are going to do it and and, and writing our our uh, bylaws that will be helpful to everybody especially for the newer members to to the councils we get more familiar with natural law with what's um, what's our responsibility first and then our rights and things will work out and we should be the help to you Karen okay and of course, you to us. With this, I yield. I think I've said enough. Thank you so much, Olga. And you are so correct. I am so impressed with everyone since we started this over a year ago. All of us volunteering our time. We have we have taken on so much and achieved so much in every province. I am just, and, and for all of us volunteering our time <laughs> to make it happen is, is extraordinary to say the least. <laughs> yeah. Thank well, you. Well done. So yes, uh, Lou, and definitely notice of liability. I did hear that there's two schools in BC that have the school board has actually stood up and said no to the vaccine mandate. So I do believe that is happening more and more. And so that is very, very exciting. Mm -hmm. Andrew, go ahead. Uh, okay, so I just wanted to respond I had a private uh, question asked of me in the chat. Are peace officers, as we know them, to be police officers in a city, RCMP, security at an office or residential or airport facility? These peace officers, are they different from what we already recognize as law enforcement? So I think she's referring to the peace officers that were mentioned in the resolution of one accord. So I don't necessarily, they are different. Um, and I, there's been a lot of discussion and a lot of different forums and threads about, oh, that term means this and that term means that. And it's all about <clears throat> the advice is reclaiming the term. So even though they have policy enforcement officers, which are police officers, you know, if we call them peace officers, that's, that becomes our definition of what we apply to it. Um, my understanding is, and I don't know where I read this recently, but a sheriff, which kind of was one of the roles under the uh, assembly in a box form, but that a sheriff has the ultimate authority when it comes to that they are granted um, exceptional authority, uh, even currently. So like in, in the US, they tend to use sheriffs in all of their law enforcement counties, et cetera, right? And that, he, that sheriff has the ultimate authority uh, we do have sheriffs in Canada, but I think that they're kind of underutilized. You always hear about the sheriff going in, being called in to um, evict people or, um, you know, I think that there's a, it's a misuse of them. But as far as 
and, and I would, I'm opening this up to discussion as well. I don't want to be the answer to this question, but I thought it was a good question to bring forward about what does it mean to have a peace officer and what kind, where does, what role exactly is it that we're assigning to the people who are willing to do that? <clears throat> so uh, with that, I yield. And if you would care to discuss it, Oops, I muted myself. <laughs> okay. Sorry. You. If you want to call on other people and come back for, for discussion, that's fine. Thank you, Sandra. And yes, that is going to be a big component to having authority in this, the towns is, and David Strait, he talks about this quite extensively uh, in, in, his in his seminars. Uh, is that the sheriffs do hold the highest authority and a, a sheriff in the US, if the FBI come into their town or the CIA or a corrupt agency wanting to create a big uh, factory that you know is gonna create pollution or whatever, it doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter how big the corporation is, the actual sheriff can say no to the FBI, get out of my town, to the CIA, get out of my town, to anyone, and they have to leave. And, and so, uh, unfortunately, uh, many of the sheriffs have been bought. And so, again, we need to create the integrity, bring the integrity back into the small towns so that we can bring prosperity back into the small town. But thank you, Sandra. And Karen, it's uh, Arena from Ontario. Thank you, Rina. Yeah, sorry. I next time I would put my full name, but uh, the video that you show, excellent video, and I think it's only solution that you can take right now. And uh, it's no point to postpone it. You're going to be postpone it until they stay in front of your door and trying to pinch needle in you. This is this is then you're going to go and start. Oh, we have to. We, we should be doing this earlier. And there is no point also, obviously you didn't have experience in this country, but uh, you have to start with the head because fish are uh, fermented from the head. So if you're starting with little nurse, by the time you come to the head, it would be ready and prepared. So you have to be exercising, uh, uh, well, you have to find out how to do this. I'm not going to discuss it on this <laughs> call, obviously. But uh, obviously, you have to start with the head. And at this point, if you don't stay in your courage and start start doing this as natural citizen, like all of you claiming to be, and exercise your natural law, nobody going to do this. No police going to do this. No sheriff is going to do this. Only people will do this. Because right now, everybody, like I understand, everybody in some big turn, turnout about this. It's only you people who understand what have to be done, have to stand and organize it. And if you don't do this, nobody will do this. So it's all, it, it, it will be all blah, 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 blah. Thank you very much. Irina, I love it. You are about conscious leadership, taking inspired action and being responsible. This is what it's all about. We cannot wait for anyone else. There's no saviors. We need to step up. Thank you so much, Irina. I appreciate you. And I just want to thank Terry for your lovely message. I appreciate you. And Carmen, thank you. Yes, 11 school boards in BC that said no to vaccine mandates. Yay, BC, what's going on with Alberta? <laughs> uh, could somebody put in the plan council saskatchewan.ca website in the chat as well? Thank you. Christina. Hi, I'm going to focus on some of the wins and someone said in there, if they uh, can get on the jury for Trudeau's trial, I'd like to be on that jury too. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we caught uh, somehow your Dr. Nagaze from Alberta, Rimby, Alberta, I'm sure you, I don't know if you remember this story, but he was giving ivermectin to his patients and he was taken off duty. Um, for uh, administering ivermectin. Well, he's now in BC and I saw him speak at the Nuremberg trials, the 75th anniversary, um, whenever that was last month, 
that Joseph Roberts of Common Ground put on his fantastic talk, but then I've seen him being super active lately. I did an event on 11-11 at the Vancouver Art Gallery called Remember Who You Are, which is to remember we are love source and to say no to war on Remembrance Day. And from in that event, it was announced that there was an incident at the Lionsgate Hospital where 13 stillborns in 24 hour period happened that from mothers had been vaccinated. So that was like shocking, but Dr. Gaze and another doctor basically um, that on that day, on, on the 11th, they filed a lawsuit against um, Bonnie, bitch. I mean Bonnie Henry, <laughs> Bonnie Henry, um, and some and another person for conflict of interest. So they're they're starting to file lawsuits against these people, um, and that so that's really interesting. And that was all filmed with them going into the RCMP and filing those charges. So and then um, what I've seen in in Ontario that was really interesting, and I posted it on the chat, is they've basically got, let me just find it on my screen here, um, they, they, you can go and actually find it. They filed charges against their local, our, the top of the, the head of the RCMP um, and, and the, so the commissioner of the RCMP. So the, basically the RCMP in this region, Halton, is saying, we're not going to fulfill these orders any longer. We had to take children out of homes and put them into residential school because we were ordered to do that. And we will no longer comply with crimes against humanity. So all of these letters that they've written and they filed lawsuits against their local authorities. So they filed them, let me just say where that is. Um, so they filed them against their um, mayor, and the head of the RCMP, this woman, um, and they fought, and there's all these letters that you can actually go and read. So if you go and look at these letters, I did po post them. Let me just find that here, here we go. Uh, oh, there we go, Halton. So there's a file, Halton arrest folder. So they, They've done an open letter to the RCMP Commissioner Brenda Lucky and an arrest declaration to Steven Tanner. And so all those files are available to just go and copy the same kind of information because what they're saying is that they, we are arresting Steven Tanner, the man acting as chief of police. So you're, you're arresting the man acting as and basically for administering a noxious substance to minor in contravention of section 245 of the Criminal Code of Canada by forcing children to breathe in carbon dioxide. So everything is listed there, crimes against humanity, parties to offense, hoax regarding terrorism, extortion, intimidation, <laughs> the whole list, um, breach of trust by public officer and you torture them through isolation, monopolization, perception, humiliation, degradation, exhaustion, threats, et cetera. So these, are, these declarations of arrest are happening in our country, in Halton. And this is the first I've seen um, an area that's doing it. And, the, and basically the, the RCMP has got an open letter that they will, know, they, will not, they will not accept orders that are crimes against humanity. So the RCMP are starting to say, no, we will not follow your orders. That is very exciting, Christina. Thank you. And that that's what creates the domino effect. Terry. Hello, how are you doing, Karen? I'm doing great, thank you. That's good. Just getting back to the peace officer thing. The experience, experience I have when I was in the repossession business I had to become a peace officer 30 years ago or 25 years ago. And you the, basically the thing is, the only thing I couldn't do is carry a gun. I had to swear the oath and everything the RCMP do that clarifies anything. 
and also uh, citizens arrests are pretty easy I've done a few of them but you have to know their corporate law and the criminal code and stuff if you're going to arrest the person because it's the same thing as a peace officer or RCMP arresting somebody else you have to know build a case so it's not hard to do but if we're going to turn it into natural law we need to know natural law to a T and will work very very good but it's not a scary thing to be a peace officer and they have all the rights as a as an RCMP except you can't carry a gun that's it and that's in my experience so with that I yield Thank you, Terry. And that's, that is, I think, a really big piece for people who want to create a town council is, you know, they get to really discover what their purpose in life is and what their passion is. And there's going to be quite a few people who want to say, hey, I want to be a peace officer. What do I need to do? <laughs> exactly. It's all in education. So that's great. And I yield. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, we need a lot of people just uh, looking into what it means to be a peace officer. So thank you for bringing that up, Terry. Okay. Take a deep breath, everyone. <laughs> We're going to get through this. We, we have the power to move through everything that is occurring right now. We have the God-given power within us. So thank you everyone for being here and uh, please step into the think tanks. We are making it happen together. We rise. Okay, so we're going to move into our meditation, which is really important right now because so many people are feeling so stressed. And meditation to me is the number one tool for reducing stress. Make yourself comfortable in your chair. Now this meditation is gonna be about self-reflection. I'm gonna share a list of questions. And with each question, I want you to feel into the question and I'm going to give you a minute or two so there'll be silence between the questions. And I'm gonna give you space to contemplate your answers within your own mind. So close your eyes. And just focus on your breath. So you're breathing in to the count of five and breathing out to the count of five. And just letting go of yesterday, letting go of tomorrow, allowing yourself to be fully present right here, right now. This is where your power lies, is in the present moment. Just focusing on your breath. And when I ask you the question, your mind might begin to wander and a wandering mind is a natural part of meditation for everyone. It's not a sign that you can't meditate. So when your mind wanders, just bring your breath back into your focus, your breath anchors you. So the first question I'm gonna ask you is if I was whole and there was nothing wrong with me, how would I feel?
what would my life look like if I knew I always had a choice? What would taking full responsibility for my life look like? As you contemplate these questions, just allow your mind to expand. As you feel into these words, what would my relationships look like if I knew I always had a choice about how I feel? What would my work look like if I could do something to serve the people and the planet? What would I do? Keep focusing on your breath. If your mind starts to wander away from the question, if I truly loved myself, who would I see when I looked in the mirror? If I could fall asleep right away and wake up rejuvenated every morning, how would I feel? How different would my life be? If I no longer carried the pain from the past, how would I feel? If I could do anything, 
if I could have the career that I've always wanted, what would that look like? If I could see and imagine the world no longer wearing a mask, how would I feel? Take a deep breath in. Letting go, just saying to yourself, I am a conscious leader as I am leading my life to higher levels of freedom, love, and prosperity. I have the power. I am the power. I am the authority of my life. I am reclaiming my personal power now. And so it is. On the count of three, you can open your eyes. So one, bring yourself back into your room. Two, bring yourself back into your body. And three. And just continue throughout the evening, throughout the rest of your week to contemplate on those questions. Thank you so much for being here and rising up together. You are loved, namaste. Thank you, Jason, you're awesome. Thanks, Karen. Thank Good night. You. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good Thanks, night. Karen. Thank you, Karen, and everybody, Sandra. Yeah. Thank you. Good Karen. night. Thank you, Karen. Everybody. Thank you. Lou, I totally forgot to vote your garage sale. <laughs> well done. So true. All done. I still have a few things. Well, we, I'm looking forward to seeing you on Saturday. Yeah, me too, Karen. Thank you for doing it. Lots of love. Thanks, Karen. Bye. Bye-bye.